Hello, what's up everybody? We are here with episode 11 of Motivation With Me. So first, let me start by apologizing because I have not posted a YouTube video in a little while and I promised myself I would be consistent by posting one every week. So I haven't because things happen in life and I have been very busy doing my entrepreneurial activities and, you know, taking care of my teenager and just relaxing and trying to rest and really, you know, get back to self-care and self-love. And I actually just got back from a one night vacation in Lake Charles because I really just needed time alone. I needed time to myself. So, of course, I found a deal for a cheap night at a at a nice hotel. And I was like, you know what? I'm just I'm going to take a a night, a day and a night to myself. And it was so relaxing. It was very very relaxing, especially because they had a gigantic jacuzzi tub in my hotel room. That was wonderful. And it gave me time to meditate, to pray, to think, to not think, to do so many different things. So I have been working on that. And I, you know, I know you guys will understand that, especially if you've been watching my blogs, the first series on All About Self. So I am back and I am doing better or will try my hardest to do better. But I definitely want you guys to stay tuned into my YouTube, subscribe, hit that subscribe button below so that you can be updated and know every time I post a video, especially because we are going into my favorite series, Single, Save, and Celibate, okay? So that means we're going to be talking a lot about sex, all things sex, everything involves sex, um, all things celibacy. And not really all things single, but most things single. But I do plan on the next video being couple celibacy. So celibacy and relationships. So make sure you guys stay tuned for that YouTube video. I have written the blog um, because I do blog and blog, as you guys know, on masturbation, which is a quick summary of my feelings on masturbation when you're celibate. And masturbation is a topic that we don't talk about, that we really should talk about, because we're sexual human beings and we're adults. So I feel like this is a conversation we should be having and not be ashamed of having the conversation about masturbation, because it it's healthy, it happens, and I'm almost positive everybody will masturbate at least once in their lives. I mean... Come on, just out of curiosity, you're going to do it. So I am at, I said in my blog, I don't I didn't I don't think I masturbated for the first time until after I lost my virginity, because, of course, it wasn't really social media back then. Like you didn't really know like what porn was or like, you know, I well, I didn't. I don't know about everybody else, but I think it was after I lost my virginity that I really started masturbating or trying masturbation and then having conversations with my aunt about things like that, who was very open with her sexuality, which is one thing I do appreciate about her. So let's talk about it. Masturbation and celibacy. Okay. So from a biblical point of view, masturbation is not acceptable. And it's not really the masturbation, it's the thought of lust and the thought of sexual desire, which is a sin that we commit how many times a day? Because we're thinking about sex or we have some type of sexual idea in our head. There, Whatever the thoughts are is considered sin. So, but no sin is greater than the other. So, a Thinking about sex, gluttony, abuse, like nothing, <laughs> there's no level to sin. So this is something that we always do, okay? We are, sin we're, we're not perfect, we're sinful human beings. That's why we ask for forgiveness and we repent and we move on. 
So, um, from a, that's from a biblical perspective. Now, from a scientific perspective, masturbation, which if you don't know what masturbation means, is the stimulation of the genitals with the hand for sexual pleasure, both men and women. So, from a scientific view, masturbation is actually healthy because it helps you relieve stress, um, especially if you're celibate. Like, I always tell people I'm probably 10 times grouchier than I normally am because I'm celibate, because it's a hormonal thing and your body is not adjusted, you're not getting that pleasure. Like, as humans, we need that physical attraction. We need that physical connection. We need that stimulation. So that is probably why I'm so grouchy. But nevertheless, I'm working on it. And masturbation, you know, it's been proven that it's scientific, like it's healthy. It relieves stress. It keeps your hormones moving. It stimulates your vagina or your penis. And yes, you know, I'm unfiltered. So if you're not <laughs> going to handle my conversation, then please stop watching right now. Or if you underage and you really don't want to have that conversation, or if your mother is listening in the background. Um, so, but this, like I said, is a conversation that we have to have. Like I talk to my teenagers about sex. I talk to them, especially about safe sex. They have no problem being open with me. So I'm going to post the links. It's, uh, two articles that I found to be very interesting. Um, celibacy and the spirit, spiral, sorry, spiritual aspect of masturbation and self-love and then there's another one that's like 12 facts to masturbation and that I thought was really interesting it's actually 12 facts to celibacy but it mainly talks about masturbation and what we like to call outer course okay outer course is masturbation kissing oral sex a uh, stimulation of the hand from the opposite sex like anything that is not vaginal intercourse which is something i'm unfiltered which is a penis entering into your vagina okay that's what intercourse is outer course is things that happen outside of the body that is not actually penetration so know the difference between outer course and intercourse and if you've read my blog i have one called oral sex is sex too so I am not perfect. Everybody has their own celibacy journey because even especially in some cultures and in some religions, they are celibate from marriage and sex. So they don't do anything like no sex, no marriage. Like there's different type of chastity and purity. Like there's different levels to this shit. You know what I'm saying? So everybody handles celibacy in their own way. Like it's no, there's no rule book to celibacy, you know, and even if, even when it's based off of spirituality and religion, there's still not a rule book. Everybody's going to have a different experience and a different celibate journey when it comes to celibacy. Okay. There's no right and wrong. It's between you and God on how you do your celibacy journey. What you do, what you don't do. What you allow, what you won't allow. And, you know, I'm guilty of oral sex and masturbation. And I get all the time, like, well, if you're doing oral sex or if you're masturbating, then does that still technically make you celibate? It does. That's not going to take away from my celibacy. Out of course, is not going to take away from my vow because of the vow that I set between me and God. Me and God have our understanding and what I want to do with my life, I'm going to do it. So I have my rules, you know, and sometimes I do feel bad about them. Like when I do make loopholes and I cross certain boundaries, I am convicted. I have something I have to deal with, but I'm also a human. Like I said, so with masturbation, if let's just say for a sake of the conversation, I didn't do it. That would be unhealthy to my body for one. And that would probably make me a little crazy. Okay, make me more crazy. 
more and more crazy because I'm already not all the way there. <laughs> so it would really like I can't imagine just not doing anything or not stimulating myself in any way. So the question on the blog was, so do you masturbate? Yes, I masturbate because everybody always says when they find out I'm celibate, they say they either ask, well, are you masturbating? Or they say you should be masturbating like at the bare minimum, you should be masturbating. So I'm not ashamed to say that I do. And I don't understand why people are ashamed of that. You don't have to be ashamed because you masturbate. Like, why be ashamed of that? Be Admit the truth. Be honest. Be open. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. Nobody's going to condemn you because you masturbate. Like I said, everybody does it at least once in their life. Maybe you don't like it, so you won't do it again. But you're at least going to try it. So, you know, this is a conversation that we have to have, guys. We have to talk about masturbation. And in regards to celibacy, like I said, you set your own rules for how you want your celibacy journey to go. And you don't have to let what other people think or what other people say influence your celibacy journey because your journey is for you. Okay, it's not for everybody else to understand and accept. It's for you. It's a decision that you make on your own and you decide the rules for your celibacy journey. I cannot stress that enough. Everybody is not going to be the same. They're not. So masturbation is literally, like I said, a conversation that we need to have. OK, um, whether it's fingers, whether it's sex toys, whatever, whatever, whatever your style is, you know, I, that's it's all on you. I'm not going to give you the details of what I do, <laughs> but whatever way you decide to do it, that's on you. That's your sexual pleasure. That's your body. You can do what you want to do with your body. And then you decide after that. OK, so what's next? Like you know, as a celibate person, I'm sorry, as a non-celibate person, because obviously when you're celibate, you don't really have that many options. Like you can't have intercourse. So you're going to, you can call it slip. I don't really call it slip, but like I said, loopholes, you're going to find ways around it. And you're going to have, like I said, what's called Outer course at some point in your time, because like I said, outer course includes kissing, too. So don't let first of all, don't be ashamed to talk about masturbation and don't let anybody have an opinion on what you do with your body. Like it's it's none of your business. So celibacy comes with flaws, setbacks, so many risks, so temptation, so many different things but you have to think why are you celibate what are your intentions okay is it to grow spiritually is it to find mental intimacy like what are your reasons for celibacy you know mine was so that I could focus on my goals because I know who I used to be I know that men were my weakness so I know also that at a point in my life from being promiscuous since I was 14, it got to the point where it was just numb to me. It was like, I didn't even feel it anymore. Even in relationships, it's just kind of like, who are we done? And I had to get rid of that factor. I couldn't live my life anymore. And I told a friend of mine, you know, I had to find myself again because for the longest of my life, I, it was always about other people. It was always about men. It was always about the relationship I was in. It was always about the guy that I was dating. It was not about Miranda. So I had to step back and decide, you know what? You can't keep doing this. You're going to have to start working on yourself. You're going to have to start loving yourself again. Because especially as a sexual abuse survivor, you tend to think that your body is property. And that it can be used for sex or it can be used by men because after you're abused, you know, being molested when I was 12 and raped when I was 16, 
the molestation made me believe in my mind that my body is here for this specific reason because I didn't know what was going on. So, and by the way, check out my last series on child sex abuse, which is really good because I give a lot of tea and a lot of advice at the same time. So, you know, I couldn't, I had to step back. I really had to step back like that. First six months was hard, but for that first year, maybe year and a half, I found Miranda. I found myself. I grew closer to God. My spirituality grew. My faith grew. Vo God's voice became clearer to me because I didn't have any distractions. I didn't have anything I had to worry about. I wasn't putting myself in toxic relationships or worrying about who I'm going on a date next and who, what man am I going to talk to now? Like that was just not my focus. And I set goals for myself. Hence the trouble movement, elements of me, LLC, my master's degree, my accounting clients, being an entrepreneur, my writing clients, my speaking engagements. Like there were so many goals that I had set for myself. And I knew because I know myself that I couldn't reach those goals if I didn't remove the one thing that I knew was going to distract me. OK, and there are men out there who will support you and continue to push you and not distract you, but push you towards your goals. I'm not saying those men don't exist. I'm just saying I didn't have time to find out. OK, I was on a mission. I was on a mission to write my books and my mission to start my business and my mission to become an entrepreneur and my mission to start the trouble movement and help trouble teens or even youth that are at risk of so many things like cyberbullying and social media and sex and all the other things that are going on in life that they have to deal with. That was my goal. That was my purpose. That is what I was trying to do. So as a result, I became celibate. I've been celibate for years, going on five, February 8th of next year. That'll be five years, five long years. And, you know, I don't I'm not looking at the time. I'm not counting the time because somebody asked me, like, well, how do you think you're going to find a man or like what? What is your goal? Like, what do you think is going to happen? And like I said, I go to bed every night and I pray to God, not God send me a man, God send me a good man, God send me a godly man, God send me this kind of man, this kind of man, this kind of man. No, God, you send me the man that you created for me because you put somebody and created somebody on this earth, some man that you made specifically for me. I don't know when he's going to show up. I don't know who he is, but I know that he's out there and I have to have that type of faith. Anybody has to have that type of faith to get through celibacy, because if you don't have faith that eventually you're going to find love and you're going to find the man that God made for you, then it's going to be a hard journey. It's going to be a struggle. And so you have to keep that in mind, especially when temptations come and you want to slip up and everything comes with experience. So even though in the beginning it may be hard, the longer you go, the easier it becomes to hold your temptation and to be strong in your in your willpower and not fold. Because you get so wrapped up and especially if you have goals like I did and like all the things that I wanted to do, you get so wrapped up in making things happen that sometimes you don't even realize that you're celibate like you don't realize that you're not having sex and everybody always say oh i couldn't do it oh i can't do it i can't go two weeks i can't go six months you don't know what you can do until you try it <laughs> like you don't know what you can do so you'd be amazed at the what can come from it you know it's, it's like a really long fast i always say that. it's like a really long fast what comes when you fast you get closer to God, you can hear his voice, your mind is clear, your body is relaxed, you're focused. So it's just a really long fast. And yeah, it has its down times. It sucks sometimes. You can't find a man like that. Look, I can go all day. That's going to be a whole nother YouTube video. But the point of the matter is you decide to become celibate for your own reasons. And there is nothing wrong with masturbation. OK, so am I going to stop? This is a question on my blog that I put at the end. Am I going to stop? Probably not. <laughs> I'm probably not going to stop. 
Um, and this is not like something I do every day, but I'm not going to stop doing it because as I said, it's a health, it's a healthy thing. Like, I really want you guys to read the articles that I'm going to put below this video so that you can see what comes from it. Like, why, for men mental and medical reasons, people masturbate, even in celibacy, even in their celibate journey. So make sure you guys really check that um, those articles out. So I just want to get on here and explain, you know, kind of open up the door for masturbation and to make it comfortable for people to talk about it, especially celibate people. Like, I don't want my, my fellow celibate people, I know you out there, to think, you know, oh my God, I masturbated, I ruined my file. Like, this is horrible. God's going to get me. This is, I'm condemned. Like, no, God gave you free will for a reason. Okay. It's, it's not, don't beat yourself up over it. You know, if you have oral sex, don't beat yourself up over it. And even if you break your vow and have inter, inter, I said inter, <laughs> intercourse, start over. Okay. Start over. Like, period. Do it again. And if you don't want to do it again, then don't do it again. It's your life. You live it the way you want to. Again, that's why God gave us free will. And that is also why Jesus died on the cross to forgive us so God can blah, forgive us for our sins. And he shed his blood for this specific reason. So you repent about it and God's going to forgive you and you keep moving. Period. That's what it's, that's what it's about. And you just work harder to do better. Focus on your goals. Focus on your purpose. Find your passion. Do what it is that you want to do. Do what it is that's on your goal sheet. Like, I want to become this. I want to create this. Do that. Focus on that. But I, in no way and in no means, am I going to condemn people for masturbating, whether they're celibate or not. Because, for one, that's not my job. OK, that's not I'm not anybody's judge. There's only one judge and that's God. So that's why you don't let people judge you. You don't listen to their opinions. You do what you want to do with your own body, period. OK, so like I said, like, comment, share so that this is a conversation that we can have and open up the door and create because I always want to create a free space where people can just kind of like do what they want <laughs> like people can say what they want they can be open they can be honest you know and the reason why i brought single saved and celibacy the series back is because literally if you google celibacy blogs i'm one of the ones that pop up on the first page like my blogs pop up literally i'm still getting comments on blogs that i've written almost a year ago when i first started the single saved and celibacy series i had one girl post um comment on the blog that she been sing, uh, celibate six years and still holding on so everybody's done it everybody has their own time it's it just it happens you don't know when you're gonna meet your fiance or the man of your dreams or your future husband you don't know i don't know you don't know so that's the risk you have to take so make sure you are committed in that and you make it clear on what celibacy means to you and like i said celibacy is not abstinence okay it's an actual vow <laughs> that you have to make and you have to have a deep conversation with god about it so that was my video on masturbation again i'm trying to keep my videos a little bit shorter but masturbation is such a fun topic like just single sex relationship celibacy period is just like a phenomenal conversation like who doesn't want to talk about sex so um, next video for episode 12, we're going to talk about my next topic, which is couple celibacy and celibacy in relationships, because someone asked me or told me that, you know, th them and their partner wanted to become celibate while they're in a relationship. So I'm going to talk about that in the next YouTube video, which I hope to come out really, really soon. I'm going to try not to take a big break in between my videos because this is a really good series that i want to continue and if you guys like this series and you want me to continue it please comment again you can send me questions if you have topics for me to talk about then you can email them to me you can reach out to me on social media you can um, message me like there my contact information is below 
However you want to reach out, whatever topics you have, this YouTube channel is about my viewers and what my viewers want to hear and what they want to talk about. Okay? So, I will see you guys again for the next session on single, saved, and celibate. In the meantime, make sure you read my blogs. And actually, it's best to read those first before you watch my YouTube video. But make sure you guys keep up with my blogs. I am very consistent about my blogs because writing just is, is second nature to me. It doesn't take me but 10 minutes to write a blog and post it. So make sure you guys are actually keeping up with that. You can um, actually sign up, um, subscribe to my, new, to my newsletter so that every time I post a blog, you get an email. So, and again, my, my, my website is MirandaEvans.com. That's simple. So I will see you guys again next time for episode 12. Thank you again for tuning in to episode 11 of Motivation with me.